Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Afternoon Market Action. Also, hashtag Western Wednesday VV. Get that going. I got my cowboy hat on. I got my bolo. I got my boots. And no, I'm not showing you that I got my boots on. I got them on. Takes me a lot of work to put my leg up here so you can see my boots. If you can hear me, by all means, please respond in the affirmative, preferably with VV Nation to let me know that I am coming across loud and clear. We got us a wick wacky market today because the Fed is talking to Congress and every little thing he says that moving the market back and forth, <laughs> blazing saddles, are the, are, the, are the beans working? What in the wild world of sports is going on out here? Remember that? You can't do blazing saddles today. Let me take my hat off. You can't do blazing saddles today. That's a classic movie that you can't do that today. All right. So as we look at the market, this uh, color guard has been showing up all kinds of colors all day. Uh, I, I tweeted out on Twitter yesterday that for the next two days, which was yesterday and today, that the Fed would be speaking in front of Congress. And he has been. And man, oh, man, is it. Now, I, I, I've tweeted out that and, you know, and I've talked about this on more than one time on the live stream. I don't know why people feel that this wasn't going to happen. All right. Everybody knows that I've been saying since the end of last year that this was going to be a tough year this year. All right. Especially because of inflation and because the interest rates are going to keep rising. As soon as the Fed raised the interest rates only a quarter basis points, the market was like, hey, we're going to rock and roll. We're going to rock and roll. Turn this inside out. Do, 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 do. And everybody thought, well, happy days are here again. And the market took off a little bit. What did I call it? irrational exuberance. There was nothing that changed to the good side in the market to push the market higher. But I'm going to be the first one to say that like, take what the market gives you. I'm not going to fight the market. And I don't want you to fight the market. I want you to stay on top of what's going on. Right. So from that now uh, coming from February 2nd, we're going to show you in the market timing graph from February 2nd. We've been trending down. We've been in a, a wedge, which is a consolidation pattern. We've broken out of the wedge to the upside, back into the into the wedge, and now back to the downside for two days in a row. In my opinion, based upon what the Fed is saying and letting them letting everybody know that he's hawkish. Um, uh, sometime last week, Bostic came out and said, oh, no, we're going to think about pausing rates in the summer. Bingo. Market takes off again. And everybody's like, "Woo! happy days are here again. And then the Fed between yesterday and today is talking about, yo. Slow your roll. I'm raising interest rates. I may even raise them higher than what I'm doing right now. Next thing he's going to have to say, he's going to have to raise the terminal rate. He's got it at five. I think it needs to be at somewhere between six and seven. What does all of that mean? Oh, and again, he's adamant about getting inflation down to 2%. There's a lot going on right here. There's a lot of moving parts. And a lot of people are taking the FOMO out of that and go, ah, well, you know, I, I, they see a day go up. I got to buy some stocks. I don't want to miss this upturn. And then the reality comes in. And then it's like, ugh. so um, you would love to buy Tesla. You can buy Tesla. I, I did. A, there's a couple of videos out there that I've done on Tesla. I, there's a couple of videos, Billy, that I've done on Tesla. I like Tesla as a play. I need to time it, though. I need to be in at the right time. And there is a statement. You can be in the best stock at the wrong time and lose money. I like Tesla. I'm a big fan of Tesla. It's fundamentally sound. It makes money. But 80% of the stocks in the market move with the direction of the market. So as much as I love Tesla, uh, and actually there it is. Joey put, a, put up a video, one of the videos that I got up there. Yes, must be getting, must get at right timing. You're right. So uh, I do like Tesla. So that, um, that's the link to today's stream. Oh, sorry. That's not the Tesla video. That's the link to today's stream. We got a 211 people. What I want to try to do, we haven't been able to do it yet. Let's get 300 people in the room. Let's get 300 people in the room. There's the link 
the live link. Joey put that out there. Share that link on your social circles right now. Good afternoon, Greg. Share that right now. Let's get 300 people in the room. There's a lot of people who don't have the knowledge of what's going on in the market and they don't know what to do. Let's educate more people and I can only do that through you. Let's get 300 people in the room. And someone said they wanted a hoodie. Who said that? Somebody wanted a hoodie. Uh, that was Fernando. I am giving away another hoodie today. Uh, Joanne says I'm here. Joanne, I did. how did you put that? Anyway, we, we, we're going to give away another hoodie today. All right, so make sure you stay to the end. There's going to be another keyword. I don't know what the keyword's going to be. Joey's going to give me a keyword. And um, we're going to get you squared away. We're going to get another hoodie out there. All right, so as we look at Wow, my, my mic just went all the way red, Joey. That was interesting. And was that just me being way loud? Yeah, it's all the way up. Okay. Um, all of this red tells us today is not a good day. Yesterday was not a good day. A lot of this is being stemmed off of what the Fed is saying and people are hanging on by of what the Fed is saying. All right. I think I won already. Joey, Joey told me the word, says Fernando. <laughs> Glenn, could you discuss how is best to position in your 401k? You can't trade a lot. Wow. You know something? That's a great question. I want to address that first. All right. I want to address that first. Let's get into the program. I want to address that first. W. Phillips. I am a big fan. Of, let's go put this on a one-year graph. And I think a lot of people in the room can benefit from this as well. My 401k, I have some of it self-directed, which I do much better than the portion that is managed by mutual funds. But in that, in that uh, 401k, I love the idea of using the confirmed calls. This is over the last year, right? Over the last year, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight calls over the last 12 months. What I will tend to do in the upturns, I would go to a lot more of the aggressive stuff. You know, I'd put 30% aggressive and probably 70% more longer term, more conservative. On the downsides of the market, I'm trying to get into whatever funds will match as close to cash as possible or bond funds, all right? To match as close to cash or bond funds. Would that have helped right through here? Absolutely. Then I got my next up call. I do that same split, 30% more aggressive, 70% more long-term, and then do that again back and forth, back and forth. Um, who, there you go. W Phillips, does that help you? Does that help you? And I would, you know, especially because it's my 401k, I'm definitely utilizing the confirmed calls. It trades the least amount, uh, gives you the least amount of calls. So whether that's for W Phillips or anybody else in the room who had that question, does that answer your question and does it make sense? All right. Does that answer your question? And does that make sense? If I'm going to move money in my 401k, I want to do it as least as possible as I can. So I use the confirm calls and I manage based on what I can do with the funds that are in my 401k. All right. Uh, Ravi, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. All right. So that answers that question. Let's go back to my market timing graph here we go this is the market put this on a three-month graph this is the market folks here's the last two days of the fed talking prior to the fed talking uh we got we jumped out of the wedge we jumped right back into the wedge blew through the bottom of the wedge and now stay at the bottom of the wedge here is a new level of support that i'm going to give you on the composite sitting at about 56.66. That's a good level of a swing. And now if we break down below that, 
let's go add a parameter technical analysis let's go add support resistance i'm going to change it change the settings instead of looking back 300 bars i only want to look back 90 days about 100 bars where's my levels boom look at that i just drew that level but look at the vector vest system drawing it even better giving me a price of 5657 and then after that do we have more downside what is our next level of support sitting at the price of about 5491 the next level is then sitting at the price of 5342 so do we have more downside the answer to your question is yes will we get more downside the answer to the question is i don't know all it takes now is from a technical standpoint Let's go see if the market can bounce off of this level of support sitting at 56.57. All right. And if it does, it may have, I'm still going to be looking for this trend line. So a lot of this, even if you are not a subscriber to the VectorVest software, at least I'm giving you some ideas on how to navigate what we're going through right now. Divine conservative stocks. Stephen, I'm conservative stocks are stocks that I want to hold for a long time, for years. Can we do that? The answer to that is yes. A lot of people are going to tell you you can't. I can as long as I am playing options on those stocks. All right. So when the market's going great, I'm playing and making the price appreciation on those stocks. Even though I'm trying to hold these stocks long term, what do I do when the stock is going down? I play the options. I will sell a covered call. All right. Those kinds of things for protection or for hedging. But a conservative stock for me is the stocks that pay a great dividend. That's, you know, overall earnings per share are rising. Earnings growth is rising. It pays a dividend. It's got a high dividend safety. Um, and even in the times when the stock is going down, even though I want to still hold it long term, uh, I play the options on it. Does that answer your question, Stephen? That's what I consider a conservative stock, a longer term play. And yes, I think you can still do a buy and hold scenario as long as you incorporate options into the picture. I think you need to do that. Man, we were trying to get to 300. Am I boring you already? We dropped off on people. All right, if that's the case, I'm just going to get the stocks. I'm not going to look at, I'm just going to get the stocks. That's what it seems like. The, all you want is just for me to look at stocks. All right, fine. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's get to the stories. What stories are moving the market? Let's do that. Man, I got to know, what do you, when I do a live stream, what do you want out of a live stream? Talk to me. I want to know what is going to best accommodate what you guys want when looking at a live stream here on our channel. We try to be different. We don't want to just talk about, hey, go buy this stock. Da -da. We want to educate. So I'm just curious to know. I'm watching the numbers. I'm watching the numbers. All right. So big news. Again, stocks plunge as Fed hawkish tone jolts the market. You want a hoodie. We're going to give away a hoodie. Stock insight. We're doing that. We're going to do that in a second, Chuck. Uh, market analysis, direction in a few stocks. Ravi, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what I tried to do here. That's exactly what I try to do. So overall, we're taking a look at what's going And a hat. I got my hat. I'm going to put my hat back on. There's my hat. There's my cowboy hat. This is a Stetson. This is a full-blown Stetson. If you look inside, this is a real full-blown Stetson. All right. So stocks to watch, forecasts, and stop losses. Okay. What you are doing is perfect. We love you, Glenn. There you go. Need someone to buy my options. Ditto, Ravi. Thank you, Andrea. Your analysis of the Fed. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of that. We talked about what the Fed should have been doing. All right, instead of ripping off the Band-Aid, I've been saying that I thought that he should have been, uh, he should have at one point in time just ripped off the Band-Aid and rose and raised uh, the interest rate by 100 basis points. He never did. Uh, he never did. And now we're, instead of, hurting the economy and, and a lot of people said that's crazy because he would have killed the economy okay what's going on right now all right so he is shrinking the economy that's what he's supposed to do but the job market is still strong um there still seems to be growth in the economy so he's walking a tight rope of trying to slow down the economy because that's what he's got to do but stabilize price uh 
And if inflation, and the last reflation number showed that inflation rose just a little bit, that's not what he's trying to do. So the Fed is, in my opinion, has got to raise interest rates to uh, on the next on the next raise probably 50 basis points all right probably the 50 basis points and we'll go from there something tells me as we go on throughout the year it might even be higher than that and then he's probably going to raise the terminal rate from five to six percent so that's my insight on what's going on with the fed steven says how to approach the market and what to focus on well if the market is starting, if it starts to trend to the downside, then you're going to look for short uh, stocks to short. You're going to look for puts to buy or, or sell calls, or you're going to buy contra ETFs. Those are going to be the four main things to focus on. <coughs> four main things to, uh, to, show, to focus on. Uh, Gary says, never mind, options sold. Great job. Oh. Please tell Powell to shh. Nah, he's going to be up there for a minute. Uh, Chuck says 25 is what they will do and add more. I think that's going to, I think they need to go 50 basis point. I'm tired of the death by a thousand paper cuts. Just freaking do it. Just do it and get to your terminal rate. And then wait, because as he's raising the interest rates, we still don't see the full effects. It's a lag. We still don't see the full effects. If you're going to do anything like pause, Freaking raise it a uh, hundred basis point and then stop. You'll be at your terminal rate and more. And then you can sit back and say, all right, let's see how this is working out. That's what I think. Do you think higher interest rates hurt new suppliers wanting to supply into the market and relieve the supply? Well, think about it. Higher interest rates are doing what? They're raising the cost of doing business. As you raise interest rates, Companies just in general borrow money to do business. If I keep raising the interest rates, that's going to deter me from wanting to borrow more money to put into research and development, to grow my business, to buy new buildings, to buy new products. So yes, it's going to hurt the suppliers, Rodney. Absolutely. But does it need to be done? Absolutely. But that's the whole, whole idea of raising interest rates is to take the money supply out of the economy that that's to take the supply out that's what it's designed to do three one hikes would have more would have had more effects i agree with that Ooh i totally agree with that but a lot of people would have been like that's that's going to kill the economy what do we do all right well his job right now is to slow the economy down first rate hike was last march lag effect is just starting to take effect that's why i say just <coughs> knock it out the box Knock it out the box, big rate hike, and then slow down. But I think that the 75 basis points were his 100 basis points, just on a lower level type of deal, and we'll see. All right, uh, I'm with you. Let's get it over. So that's to answer your questions. John says, I agree 100%, Glenn. Fed's policy so far is exasperating the market volatility. I agree. All right. Let me go through some other things. Growth stocks versus value stocks, it's all in the eye of the beholder. I think that in a good trending market, especially to the upside, growth stocks rock and roll. In markets where uh, we've got trouble brewing, value stocks are where people want to be. So that's something to keep your eyes on. Here's a stock, Workhorse, unveils a new all-electric step van, a thousand cubic foot cargo van. That's a big van. Yeah. That is a, that's a big van, yeah? Type of yes or a no in the room. For a delivery van, that's a, that's a lot of van, yes? Anyway, so Workhorse is a stock I want you to keep your eyes on. All right, we're going to, from the news perspective, we're going to take a look at the stock. How about this? Ford joins Tesla in offering hefty discount on flagship EVs in China amid tough competition. So we know that Tesla lowered... Uh, price in china they did it now in the u.s ford's jumping on board other evs are doing that as well why because they're trying to get more more sales what do you think is causing the inflation fiscal policy or something else what do you think is causing inflation fiscal policy or something else what caused inflation is the spending of the money that we did for the last 10 10 15 years that's what caused the inflation we spent a lot of money. We put a lot of money to grow the economy. 
the economy is gro were growing and it was it was rock it was rock and rolling but people i don't understand why people don't understand that what is the product of a booming economy at some point in time it's going to be inflation could we have done a better job of fending off the current inflation that we have the answer to that is yes we could have how could we have we didn't never need to call inflation transitory but you know why they called it transitory because we were in a rocking economy and nobody wanted to be the bad guy to slow it down until inflation hit 40 year highs holy smokes we got to do something about it now it's not so transitory so that's to answer your question uh m sharback that's to answer your question the policy you know uh, the, the the monetary policy was the hey everybody we went through covid let me give you a lot of money i think it was done for the right reasons but we gave out a lot of freaking money a lot of bills were passed for this that and the other thing that spent a lot of money that's where the inflation came from all right all that money created too much demand and not enough supply and i we're in it. We're we're in we're in a we're in an icky situation. All right. So inject money into the market. Oh, why? You're gonna put more money. All right. So if you put more money into the market, where, where do we get that money from, Alberto? Where, where do you? And if you do that, that make, gives people more money to spend. That gives them more money to spend. Prices go up. Prices go up. Oh, that's inflation. So no, we can't inject more money. Yeah, I, I think that at some point in time, folks, when you see what Richard put, at some point in time, we got to pay the piper. Uh, and the supply chain broken did not help. But the problem is with that, how do we control the supply chain? How do we supply? How do we fix the supply chain? The problem is a lot of products were bottlenecked up in China. So once they shut down. The supply chain got jacked up. How do we fix it? We bring a lot of that manufacturing that's over in China and we put it in the United States. The chips bill was ideally suited for that. Problem is, it takes a long time for these factories to be built to get the chip business back here. A lot of the electronics across the globe come out of China. And when China shut down, man, it affected supply globally buy stop spending well in order to buy we got to have money gary says glenn says end welfare stop giving money away no i didn't say that uh, i think that that's another whole topic i think that there's a lot of programs that are out there that are designed to help people in tough situations you know where my problem comes into play with those things that people game the system if we could cut out the people that were gaming the system, you know how much money we could save? Trillions of dollars. Can I get an amen on that? If we could stop the people that were gaming the system for the people who really needed the assistance, we could save trillions of dollars. And, you know, I, that that's, that's I, I've seen it. I've grown up. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've grown up in the hood. I've seen people just game the system and, you know, but that's again, that's another conversation for another time. And it really bothers me because to go see someone who needs the assistant and get turned down sucks. Opposed to somebody who really doesn't need it and gets a ton of money. Again, that sucks. All right. That sucks. All right. Um, Glenn, with so much dollar having been, shouldn't the dollar be weaker? The dollar is still strong because if the if people are still spending money, it's good for the economy, a stronger economy. People are still spending money. The dollar is not weaker yet until inflation. It, it, not yet. It's not yet. More IRS enforcers will be justified exponentially. Yeah, heck no. I got nothing to do with that. Ooh I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm not talking about the IRS. Oh, heck no. All right. So interesting Ford and Tesla bringing more attention to their cars um, by cutting the prices. Lithium, talking about EEVs. Lithium uh, is up 23% this year to date, but now uh, analysts find room for a price rally. 
I'll take a look at that stock. Someone asked me, who asked me in my last live stream about Mullen stock? Someone asked me about Mullen stock. And I let you know that I made a video called Messy Mullen. Well, I want to follow up on that. Mullen risks getting delisted from the NASDAQ exchange. Man, I, Mullen is just not a play that I would like to have you guys into. Mullen is just not a stock at this time. Unless, you know, you know what would make Mullen better at this particular point in time? If they had a change in leadership, that could be the step to take Mullen on a different path. All right. I had Mullen that kept messing their price up. I, I, you know something? I think once we look at this stock, we'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at the stock. But someone asked me in a live stream about Mullen. And the story came up, and now I'm giving you some insight in regards to what's going on with Mullen. Here's a stock that beat earnings. CrowdStrike stock rallies after forecast shows confidence in new approach. Security software and targeting small to mid business, blah, blah, blah. even those accounts become harder. Da, 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 CrowdStrike holding share rose in extended session Tuesday after the cybersecurity's earnings and outlook beat Wall Street. So uh, went up 2.45%. Uh, we'll take a look at it. I right, had another earnings beat, Sienna, smashes earnings expectations. It's a story of improving supply. See that improving supply? All right. So what are they doing? It's another stock. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody knows that I'm, I'm a fan of Palantir. I still think that nobody, a lot of people don't realize just how good of a stock they are. All right. Uh, but they keep getting contracts. Here's another contract. This story was done today. Like a hundred million dollar, 99.6 is close. Hundred million dollar deal with the U.S. State Department. This company gets contract after contract after contract. And I, I don't understand why it is not rocking and rolling. Not me to, to, to push it. I'm not pushing it. I just do the stories on Palantir. It's a company that takes data and use and brings it down to useful information, no matter what their client is looking for. Uh, that's right. Palantir made me another, made me some, I listen, Palantir, I just think that it should be rock and rolling, but it ain't. And that's fine. I've looked at lit as well and interested to know your thoughts. I think lithium is or should be in, in bigger demand as as you look at tesla and you look at ford and you look at a lot of these evs cutting prices well guess what at some point in time they're going to replace those cars the demand is there for evs so i'm looking at lithium i'm looking at copper both of those should be rock and rolling at some point in time but as the demand is high lithium is going to be in high demand as well so we're going to look at palantir and one more stock and this came from uh, vector vest um, came from our vector vest site GM and global foundry strike a deal to overcome ooh, supply right chip shortages what investors need to know it's a great story hold on talk about that let me let me do this copy I'm gonna put that into the chat for you paste I'm gonna put that into the chat for you take check that out all right check that out it's comes from our vector vest site the money is not there for Palantir contracts. What do you mean, Lou? Glenn, the money is not there for Palantir. How are you going to get a contract and not have the money? I'm just curious to know. Uh, I've got a list, Michael, of the contracts that are at my top at the top of my list. I'll bring that up. All right. Um, Bowl made over 24% year to date. What's moving it? All right. It's one thing for the stock to be up that much. Is it sustainable? Is it something just because it's up 24% year to date? Is it something that I would still want to put my money into? All right. And if that's the case, why? I would have to ask that question, but I'd have to analyze the stock to answer, to answer that question. All right. Let's get into the software. Let's talk about some of these stocks. All right. You want the insight. Let's talk about some of these stocks. First off, where's the what's going on in the market? The Qs is the only thing that's up. This market has gone, it was gone from all red to mixture of red and green, not all green today. I don't think it was, uh, maybe it was at some point in time, it was all green today. The market is just everywhere, all over the place, all over the place. But right now it's mixed. Our composite is down. The Dow is the biggest mover to the downside today. Let's go sort this. 
uh, alphabetically. The other way, the Dow is the biggest mover to the downside today, down about uh, four tenths of a percent. Remember, that's only looking at 30 stocks. Uh, the debt ceiling is too high. You're talking about for the Palantir? Hmm. Please look at vet earnings today. I'll take a look. Let me see if I got some time. I'll take a look at it. All right. Uh, let's talk about, I'm not going to even go to the fastest moving industries. Let's go to the stories. All right. Let's go to the stories. When I put them into a watch list, they're automatically sorted by VST. So testers at the top of the list, global foundries that match up or collaboration with GM, GFS, global foundries is number two in the list. Notice that out of the 10 stocks, only four stocks have a VST above one. CrowdStrike beat earnings, CN beat earnings, Palantir got a contract, it's down today, Ford and um, Ford and Tesla are both dropping prices, Workhorse um, and Mullen, all right, and Mullen is at the bottom of my list, again, 19 cents, nothing good about Mullen going on right now, and then when I look at that story, that just adds to the fact that there's nothing going on but the rent you got to have a job if you want to be with me customer picks hold on i'm going to put these in here don't give me any more after you've just given me oops let's go take these out all right don't give me any more right now i'm going to take what i've got from you vet comma i'll give you an opportunity to give more all right i will give you an opportunity to give more just don't do it right now just don't do it right now all right. How do I get the confirm confirm call markers on the graph? Uh, once you're on the graph, go down to where you'll see confirm calls. And normally it'll look just like that with nothing there. Click it. The confirm call markers will show up. The confirm call markers will show up. All right. Let's go back to the viewers. Um, customer picks. I'm not ready for that yet. So here's the stocks. If I'm looking at all of the news that's moving the stocks, the stock, there's only one stock that's fundamentally sound, that's Tesla. All right, let's go sort this list by relative value. GFS, that hookup with GM, all right, that, um, yeah, the hookup with GM. Fundam, it's got good upside potential, not sold altogether safe, so that's an aggressive play, and it's in an uptrend. I wouldn't mind owning that. I think that's good news. Uh, lithium, above its value, so it's overvalued, good upside potential, low safety. Again, a more aggressive play, and it is in an uptrend. GM, undervalued, like that. Upside potential is there. The safety is not. More aggressive play. RT is above one. Now, notice as I look at the RTs, this RT is barely above one. It's in an uptrend, but slightly. All right, so I, I time it by looking at a graph. CrowdStrike beats earnings, right? The stock is way overvalued, way overvalued. That just means that people are willing to pay a premium to own the stock. Upside there, no. Safety, no. But it is in an uptrend. What does this mean? Is this a trade? Yes or no? If I'm going to play CrowdStrike, is this a trade? Yes or no? Type it in the room. Let's do it quick. Would that be a trade, yes or no? All right, I'm going to wait till I see at least a couple of people answer because this is the insight based upon what's going on in the news to make me a better decision on the stock. Nobody's typed anything. It must be a big delay, and that's okay. Fundamentally, not sound, but it is in an uptrend. I would look at that on the graph View the stock graph. I would look at that on the graph in time whether or not I want to be in that. Let's go put this on a one-month graph. Wow, I do like that the stock's price is moving up. What don't I like, though? Earnings per share is falling. Well, if I'm going to play this as a trade, I'll play it as long as it stays above my 20-day exponential moving average. That's a longer-term play. Let's go to a different layout if I'm going to trade it. If I'm going to trade it, I'm going to look at the 3 and the 8. There we go. I'm all right trading this as long as the three and the eight are in play and as long as it's going up on the day that I buy it. Does that make sense to everybody in the room? Type a yes or a no. That is very important. That is very important. And they beat Albert. Yeah, they, and they beat. There's the earnings and they beat. That is very important when you're looking at any stock that I talk about in any of my live streams, 
Look at the analysis. The stock is overvalued. People are willing to pay a lot of money to own the stock. Okay. Fundamentally, does it have good upside? No. Is it a safe stock? No. Is it in an uptrend? Yes. Is it a buy? Yes. But based upon the lack of the fundamentals, that is a trade. What is considered high CI? Anything above one. Notice that none of these stocks exhibit uh, CIs above one, a comfort index above one. Why? Because they're getting caught up in the wish-washiness of the market. All right, that's why. SGML, all right, uh, I'll take a look at that. SGML in the lithium space. I still like the lithium space, but you know something? I'm going to help you out when it comes down to that. I'm going to do a little something for you. Make sure you stay. When it comes down to lithium, I'm going to show you how to find the best play in the lithium space. All right, I'm going to show you how to find the best play in a lithium space. All right, so I just want to, and I don't even want to look at all of these graphs. From the standpoint of the big news, I want you to understand when you build a watch list of any new stocks that you're looking at, news stocks, let the VectorVest start to do its work. It'll sort the list by VST. Look at the analysis. Which ones really look good? Tesla, really good. It's just in a downtrend right now, but fundamentally sound. All right, and go through this list. You wanted to know about Mullen. Mullen is not a solid play. Fundamentally not good. Not in an uptrend as a sell recommendation. Fundamentally not a good play. Its fundamentals don't look good though. On um, on which on um on which stock, Roger? On which stock? All right. So let's keep moving. All right. That's the education part. That's the insight part on the individual stocks that we're looking at. Someone asked me about Contras. Here's my five best Contras that I want you, or my, is this, yes, only five. Here's my five best Contras I want you to keep your eyes on. And this is interesting in a market that's going back and forth and back and forth, the only Contra that's really rock and rolling is SRTY. SQQQ is in here, uh, Hibs uh, is in here, Sox S and Fang D. I think that this covers you know, um, the market across the board to the, to the most part. What I'm really looking at on these countries, though, is which ones have an RT above one. All right, on VET, you were talking about VET. Uh, let's go back to the viewers on VET. Oh, did I have VET in here? I think I did. Did I not? Um, where did I have VET? Did I have this in here? I'm not even ready to look at VET yet. Roger, not even, it's there. I'm not ready to look at it. Shh, shh. Roger. Shh. Oh, hold on. I could do this. Roger. Uh. No, God, please, no. 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 All right, so I could do that. <laughs> can you trade contrast with the MPI strategy? Absolutely, Stephen, you can. All right, absolutely, you can. Glenn has told us not to buy stocks with a confirmed down unless we know the stock we are buying is solid going up investment. What are you saying, Lou? I was talking, oh, you were talking to Chuck, Roger? Doesn't matter. All right, so if you were talking to Chuck, then. I love it. All right, <laughs> if you were talking to Chuck, <laughs> if you were talking to Chuck, that was it. All right, um, I love that. And, and I gotta put this one up here too, for all of you, who are having problems getting your portfolios on the right track with all of everything that's going on in the market. Hey, kids are probably asking yourselves, hey Matt, how can we get back on the right track? All right, I gotta put that up there as well. All right, so I love those GIFs. Those GIFs are amazing. Glenn is excited with the, I love these buttons. These buttons are freaking amazing, amazing. All right. Um, so the, I'll go back to the contrast real quick. Now, remember, these are five that I like for you. There's a lot of contras out there. You guys rock and roll and figure out which contras are best for you. All right. But you asked me the question, what five do I have? These are the five that I have uh, for you. All of those venomous are new. Joey got me those in the last couple of weeks. All right. He got me those in the last couple of weeks. And I think we're going to be working on more. We're going to try to be working on more. I love those those, those are freaking amazing. I love those. 
All right. Uh, customer picks, we're going to come back to that. No, no, we're going to come back to that. How many of you have now been using your hit list, watch list, type of one in the room? Since the video I put out about the hit list, how many of you are consistently using your hit list, watch list on a daily basis, type of one? All right. Junior gal says, I'm only 20 and I want to build a strong portfolio. What is your advice, Glenn? Then as a 20 year old, I'm going to start off by saying you might be able to take more advantage of um, being a little bit more aggressive. Depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to grow a portfolio really quick in a, in a short time, in a short amount of time, you can you have the time at your on your side to be a little bit more aggressive. That's one side of it. The other side of it for me, for letting you know, is you want to look at good long-term paying uh, stocks that pay dividends. And I've done videos on those as well, Junior Gal. Take a look at them. Talking about stocks that pay dividends, even monthly dividends. I love that idea for you as a younger person to find stocks that have good upside potential that also pay dividends. You can make money on it twice. Long-term investment is what I'm looking at. So I've done videos on them. And actually, if you are a subscriber, Junior Gal, if you're a subscriber, I would go to, where is it, Searches Retirement. Which one do I want? Um, I don't know how much money you have, but I like this search, Long-Term Winners. All right. Um, you got to have pro trader for it. So let me, there we go. Long-term win is using relative safety, uh, stock price greater than one average volume. <sighs> Only thing I would add to this is something that it shows that it pays dividends. So let's go back up a little bit because I just talked to you about dividends, uh, in that portfolio price greater than dollar, blah, 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 blah. Sorted by dividend yield times earnings yield. I like that. If I run this search right now, what kind of stocks do I get? Again, I don't know how much money you have. I know that you're, you're saying that you're 20. Some of these stocks could be, look at these. Now, not all of these stocks are super expensive. Does that help you? Does that help you? I like dividend paying stocks, especially for you as a youngster. I like the dividend paying stocks. Let's go over to dividend. All of these should pay a dividend. Uh, yes, they do. And I'd look at dividend safeties greater than 50. I think this is a good place for you to start. I think this is, and not all of these stocks are super expensive. All right. All right. Let's go back to the viewers. Here's my hit list. Now, you know, what's cool about this is if you open it up in the morning before the market opens up and sort it by percent price change, you can see what stocks are moving. How many people in here were in the jockey club this morning? How about Maxon is in my list? How about Maxon is in my list? It's up 37%. I could have seen that pre-market. Kala is a stock that has gone up on me a lot of times. That's why I made my list up 15% today. This is cold. How about that on the, um, the, um, the natural gas side? Cold is rocking and rolling. So, and, and then, you know, I can still use my hit list to find out which stocks I like longer term. Stocks that have good upside potential. Sort my my watch list by relative value. And then I can see which ones have the best upside. CPRX. We've made this SGML. You wanted to look at SGML in my list. It's got good upside potential. And it's in an uptrend. Look at that. All right. I got my tankers. I got 86 stocks in here that all that have caught my attention. And I can use this list to help me out all the way around uh, in looking for stocks. All right, let's go to customer picks real quick. I'll take 10 picks. And Joey, start getting a keyword ready uh, for the hoodie today. Start getting a keyword ready for me. When you're ready, just let me know. I got one, two, three, four, five. I need five more stocks. Five more stocks. Five more stocks. Five more stocks. All right. Uh, SQQQ is already in the list. CVI, one, that is already in the list. I need five stocks that are not on the list. Two, three, four, five. All right. ESM is not on the list. Who gave me ESM? Alberto is not in my list. 
A uh O K Y O. O K Y O. O K Y O. All right. Here's my 10 stocks I'm gonna look at for you today. All right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. 10 stocks. Sorted by VST. URI is at the top of the list. Notice out of the 10 stocks. How about this? Seven out of the 10 stocks have VST above one. How about just about every stock in here is optionable too? As we look, United Rentals, undervalued. Sigma, undervalued. Uh, that is an ETF. CEX, undervalued. CVI, undervalued. Vermilion, Ver, uh, VET, undervalued. And OKYO is overvalued. All right. So remember I told you I would look at, because I like lithium, told you you need to stay. If I wanted to find the best stock in the lithium space, let me show you how easy you can do that. If I right click on the stock and I view the stocks in the industry group, first off, it's gonna tell me how many stocks are in the industry group. Second off, it's going to sort this automatically by VST. So there's 156 stocks in that industry. Where does Sigma sit? Boom! Right there. How cool is that? If you thought that was cool, type a yes. If you thought that was easy, type a yes. I can do that on any stock. I can do that to any stock. Right click on the stock. Look at all of the stocks within that industry. See which one is the best. Look at that right there. What other stocks are in here? There's the LTHM where it sits. There's the stock that we did today, LAC, where it sits. Woo! You want to know about the shipping stock? Do I have a shipping stock in here? No. Let's go put in uh, ASC. I could do the same thing. You want to find out what the best shipping stock. Look at that by VST. Now it's the number one stock in my list by VST. Let's go look at the whole space. View the stocks in the industry group. How many stocks are in the industry group? We've got 51. What's at the top? Woo! Kevin gave me INSW. By VST, it's number two. Somebody looked at NAT. Somebody typed in NAT. It's number three. I looked at ASC. It's number four. So the cool thing about this is I can look at all of the stocks in the industry and to see and determine which ones are the best. Now, wait a minute. Wait. There's more. What if I want to find the fastest moving stock in ship transportation? Let's sort the list by RT. Whoo! You want some insight, baby? You getting it? TNK at the top of the list. Nat INSW drop down. DHT down here. TK Tankers is moving the fastest in the industry. All right. In the shipping space. Which stock grows their earnings the fastest? Well, especially because I know that earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. Let's sort the whole list by earnings growth. Let's, let's, let's do that. INSW. And now I can start to see where other stocks that I like fit in the list based on the analysis. So there you go. The sort is the secret sauce. Absolutely, Rick. Absolutely. CTRM made the list, and it's undervalued. CTRM spun off. I heard about that in the jockey club this morning. CTRM, uh, we're going to get the other stock. It was some other stock. What was it? T-O-R-O, -O, Torov. It spun off, so we'll see about that. All right. Code word to enter the drawing hoodie is, wow, yeehaw. You got to spell it right. If you don't spell it like Joey spelled it, you ain't going to be entered in. It's got to be spelled the way. All one word. It's got to be spelled the way that Joey put it up there. If you better look, you better spell it right. Because if you don't spell it right, you ain't getting it. How about that? Don't make me turn this room around. What software or website are you using, Glenn? I am using the VectorVest software. This software right here, VectorVest 7. Um, if you want a trial to it, uh, junior gal, Joey's going to put a link. We're offering a trial, 99 cents for 30 days to take advantage of this software. Joey will put a link in the chat for you. 30 days, 99 cent access to that. Right, that didn't work. No punctuation. Uh, listen, yep, Bill put it punctuation. Nope, you can't get it. 
tell you, you got to spell it just the way Joey did it. Nope, Rick, you put. Uh, listen, I don't care. Whatever, it, it's going to be drawn anyway. There it is, Junior Gal. Click that link, sign up. Ninety nine cents for thirty days. Ninety nine cents for thirty days. You know, the cool thing is I got so much stuff that I always prepare for you for, but most recently, um, I love your questions. And these sessions have now been tailor-made to the questions that you've asked, which I'm fine with. I right, don't, don't get me wrong. I spend the time to prepare all of this stuff for you. Actually, I will do this. I got some hot stocks that I got for you. Keep in mind, though, make sure the market's moving your direction. There's one of them. Nat is up in there. Uh, airline, Glinda Hairline, uh, Geo China Battery Group is up in here. I got these are my stocks and the, the cherry picking process that I go through for you. Is there one CST for vector? I don't understand what you're asking me, Alberto. I'm not sure what you're asking me, and I apologize. All right, Joey's going to give me in a second who's going to win the hoodie. Remember, this week, I'm buying three hoodies, one for each. I'm giving away a hoodie, one for each live stream. We gave one away on Monday. I'm giving one away today, and I'm giving another one away tomorrow. All right? Giving away your birthday week. Yep, Fernando, is for my birthday week. I'm giving you guys hoodies, three hoodies. Or I have to pay every month. Or, oh, I have to pay every month. Is there one? Oh, it's a monthly payment. Or oh, you can pay annually, Alberto. Um, If you're not, let me let me put this out here. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit the subscribe button, by the way, too. Especially if it's worth it for you to come by. And number two, hit the like button if you like what we went through. What did you do for your birthday? My wife took me out and I got a really expensive steak at a, at a really nice restaurant in downtown Charlotte. She said it was a restaurant that was on her list that she wanted to go to, and it was it was a great meal. Oh my gosh, my steak! I had a ribeye, bone-in ribeye. It was amazing. A uh, one-year cost for the vector vest. Um, give us a call. Give us a call. No, it wasn't Longhorns. I no, it was called Dean's Dean's Steakhouse in Charlotte. Dean Steakhouse. VectorVest Premium offer everything that you're using in VectorVest. And Boston, does the premium offer? The, I think the premium does offer just about everything that I show here. I I think that the, I think that, and Boston can answer that. Um, I think that the premium does offer just about everything that I'm showing. I think. Boston will better know that. Laugh out loud. You get all mad. I love, I'm not mad. I just could have. Uh, listen, I, I could go to Long Holland every day, any day. Uh, you get a special cost, a real-time auto timer pro trader and watchdog. Wow, yeah, so it looks like the premium gets you all of that, everything that I'm doing, by the way. Junior Gal says, I'm also going to college for business and real estate. What should I study in business if I want to become a financial literate? Uh-uh, I don't know. I, remember, I talk about the stock market. As far as that, I, I don't know. And I'm I'm not going to put myself out there and push you in a direction that I have no idea about. I, one thing you'll learn about me is I only talk about what I know. I'm not afraid to not talk about what I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's that's I keep that real. I'm, I'm not going to ever try to blow smoke where it don't belong. All right. Um, there it is. Richard says economics. Richard says economics. Fernando, I'm about to put you in timeout anyway, just because. Just because. For sure, dude. Thanks. You got it. Uh, profit that you will make will pay for the software 10 times. There you go. I like that, Charles. My favorite steak. I'm a, I'm a ribeye kind of guy. I agree with Richard. You need some economics. So the cool thing is, Junior Gal, the people in here will hook you up. Because I'm not going to try to put you, you know, I, I don't know for sure. Um, Boston. Premium also includes Profit Locker Pro, or at least it did when I bought in. I don't know. All right. I'm waiting for Joey to tell me who winded it. Once he tells me that. Um, oh, and by the way, if you haven't already, hit the, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Uh, hit the like button. Gary Blair. Gary Blair won. Gary, are you here? Look at that. Gary says, diploma from elementary makes you a pro trader. No, it doesn't. One time I was putting the time out and it sucked. All right, Gary Blair, are you here? 
Gary Blair, are you? There you go, Gary. I need you to send an email to connect at vectorvest.com. And we're going to give you a code for that hoodie. All right, but you got to send us an email. Send the email to connect at vectorvest.com. Who said he won again? When's the last time you won? Alboro says he won again. When's the last time he won? Stop. I love that Venomous says that his subscription to the software has paid for itself. That's that's awesome, man. And folks, that's not me talking. You're listening to, you're listening to people who are subscribers to the software. You see that junior gal? You're listening to people who've been around in the VectorVest software telling you that the software is paid for itself. That's not me. That's not me saying. Wait, I missed the keyword. No, you didn't, Fernando. Sigh. I think I'm going to put Fernando and Alberto both in timeout. You guys are going to be in timeout until the next time we meet. I'm putting both of you in timeout. Just doing it. Jay is not here, so I can't put him in timeout. Oh, by the way, there's coffee, water, and nuts in timeout, so enjoy that. You can, you can have that. You can have that. All right. Um, there's the hoodie. There's the hoodie that you're getting. Joey put that up. Oh, there he is. He put that up there. There's the hoodie that you're getting. All right. So send an email. <laughs> Fernando says, I'll see you tomorrow. That, that's the only way you're getting out of timeout. Both Fernando and Alberto, the only way you're getting out of timeout is if you show up tomorrow. All right. Um, send me, Gary, send me that email uh, over to connect at vectorvest.com. We're going to give you a code so that you can go claim that hoodie. So you can claim that hoodie. All right. All right, I got to go. Again, if you thought it was worth it for you to be here today and spend some time with me, hit the like button. I right, hit the like button. We didn't get to 300 people. I don't know what it's going to take for you to get me to 300 people. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know. All right. I just need you guys to help a brother out. Come on, help a brother out. All right. I got to go. Um, and I like the insight of what you guys are looking for in a live stream. I'll work more on that. If that's what you really, really want to see in the live stream, I'll work on those particular portions of the insight the overview all that kind of stuff i'll do that all right so with that i gotta go adios arrivederci ciao au revoir sayonara aloha to all my peeps in hawaii Ooh -wee. uh bon dia salam shalom namaste yasu until next time folks see ya